Hello everyone and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be reviewing Creature Comforts by Kids Table Board Gaming. This is a 1 to 5 player game which has worker placement as one of the main mechanisms. It also has resource management, a little bit of hand management as you are trying to get these different comforts into your hands and play them. And so let's first go over the gameplay and, and it's a very simple gameplay. Uh, basically what you're going to do is you are going to take your family dice and roll them. And so you're going to know what your family dice are. Like right here, I would have two threes to work with. Uh, you're going to have different places on the board where you can then place out your workers. You're going to be doing this while only knowing your two dice. There's going to be later on, you're going to roll four dice that everybody's going to share, and you're going to know what those are later on. So you don't know exactly what dice you're going to have to work with, but you're going to place your workers out in different spots that have different numbers on them that you're going to need to apply in order to be able to actually utilize that spot. And so there's a little bit of, of trying to figure out what you're able to do in that moment as far as that goes. And so uh, you won't always be able to do what you want to do. In fact, if you can't do what you want to do, you get one of these lesson learn tokens, which later on you'll be able to use to raise or lower a dice number by one. Uh, you can apply as many of those as you want to to a single dice in order to be able to go to a spot in a future turn. And so even if you don't get to utilize all your workers like you wanted to, you can still kind of mitigate that a little bit uh, or you get something for later on to be able to mitigate in the future so it's not that total bummer there. Anyway, so you'll do that and then after you've uh, placed all your workers, you roll the community dice, the first player does, and then each player will take their turn in player order and do the different actions. You can get resources on your turn, you can get more comfort cards to be able to play, you can go to the inn and do special things that each each person in the inn does, and this is just one example here. That's going to be different each round, and and so you can do all those different things. You can get some of uh, these improvements that will help you throughout the game. Uh, it's going to be an ongoing ability or a location that people can visit and gives you a benefit there if they visit it. And then this right here is going to kind of turn throughout the game, so you have different things you need to do for each space. And so there's a few different things going on that we're going to change up each season. But the gameplay is very basic. You're just rolling your dice, placing out your workers, then you roll the community dice and hope that you can go to all the locations that you chose to go to. If you can't, you get the lesson learned token and you move on for the next round. And hopefully you can do more in the next round. And so that's the basic gameplay. It's fairly simple to learn, but it's got quite a bit uh, going on with it as far as strategy goes. And so let's go ahead and get into the review part here and talk about uh, the different things. Now first of all I want to mention that I have the Kickstarter version and so there's going to be a few things that are deluxified, upgraded, uh, a little bit different and so uh, keep that in mind as I go through here. I'll try to, if I remember something's Kickstarter, I'll try to mention that but otherwise um, I may make, miss a few things here. So first of all I want to talk about the art and the components. I love the art of this game. Uh, it, it is beautiful, you've got all these different uh, animals, and they look really great. The, the artists did a great job on different things. You've got these player boards here that each one is unique and has a little scene on there. And so I just love the artwork all throughout. The cards are very nice. Uh, I just happened to pick up, uh, I really like this one and because uh, one of the board games I really enjoy is Wingspan. And of course this is Wingspan, the board game as a comfort that you can play. Uh, you got like candles. I'm just gonna show a few of these. You got some food. You got apple pie right there. Looks good enough to eat. And so just all kinds of great artwork. Uh, look at this hearth right here. And so I just really enjoy the art on these cards, on the mat, the board. All these different things look great. You got all your different people that come to your inn. So the art is great. The components, very high, good quality components, even in the, what's going to be the base game. Uh, one thing that's kind of added to the Kickstarter is this uh, first player token is a wooden worm. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff is just going to be the, the um, I just lost a piece right there. <clears throat> so you've got all these different wooden meeples. Uh, my favorite being this one because I just like the color mainly. And this rabbit right here. They just look great. Screen printed meeples. That may the screen printing may be Kickstarter. I can't remember for sure. 
Uh, you got these different boards that are going to switch out each round. The res resource components are great as well. I really enjoy these wooden resource components. They are very nice. Uh, they all look great as well. And they have a great feel to them. So I love those components. And then they come in, the ga in this game trays. And so game trays do some great, great job as far as organizational things go. And you can put that right out on the, the table and just people can grab straight from that. I, I love that you don't have to kind of uh, put things out in different places. That it's all kind of contained right there. And so it makes it very easy to get set up. You also got kind of this part of this game trays thing here. And everything's well organized because of that. And see if I can tip this up enough that you can see some of the pieces in there. You see the different colors for all your different characters. They each have their different colored dice and house and little house things that are going to go on your uh, board. Oh, and one more thing about the components is this here, your player board. You're going to have these. You're going to take these off to, to score different points throughout the game for how many improvements you've gotten. And then at the end of the game, you're going to flip it over. You've got here where you can see how many points you're going to be scoring and then you kind of add up for all the different things that you are scoring right there. If you get above 50, you're going to place one of your meeples right there and keep keep on counting. Uh, and I like the fact that they got that kind of or incorporated in there so that you can score that way. So everything looks great. It's got a great table presence. Now let's go ahead and talk about the gameplay for a moment. The gameplay is a lot of fun. I really enjoy kind of that pressing your luck a little bit there as far as choosing to go to different locations and you may or may not get what you are able to do. You may like, okay, I know I have uh, a three and a five, so I know I can at least go here and I'm guaranteed to get that because I have a five. But this one wants this and this. I have one of what I need. Let's hope I'll get something else. And if it doesn't work out, I'll get a lesson learned token. Uh, some of them are a little bit more <clears throat> uh, free. You got th uh, three or under for this one right here. And so you have like three different options that that could work out. You got this one right here, which is two dice that add up to a total of five uh, or lower. And so there's a little bit kind of, of range there. But then you have other ones. This one right here requires a two. If you don't get a two, you can't get it. This one right here requires you have two dice that add up to eight. And so there's all kinds of different kind of situations you could find yourself hoping for. And if you don't get it, you get the lesson learned token, and later on you're able to fix that a little bit on a future turn and get something that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. And so there's at least that little benefit there that you don't feel like you've completely missed out. Uh, you got other locations. This location right here uh, on the side of the board where you get your uh, improvements. Uh, you can, each one has a number beside it that you need at least that much. And so if you uh, want something really high up on the thing, you're gonna need to roll a high number. Uh, if, but you got a lot of variability in there in the fact that if you don't wind up with a high number, you can always get something with the, one of the lower numbers. And so you've got a lot that you can work with as far as that goes. But of course, you do need to have the resources already to be able to pay for something over there. Uh, it's not something that you can take and pay for later like the comfort cards. And so if there's something you really only have the resources for that's really high up, you're going to have to get that high number. And so I like the bit of that kind of pressing your luck of hoping that you get the right dice uh, but you know a little bit of what you're going to have, and so it's not completely uh, blind there. You're going in with a little bit of the information and then hoping the rest comes out. really enjoy that. I really enjoy that you're all putting out your meeples all at once there uh, in the worker placement phase, where uh, it kind of speeds things up. You don't have to wait for everybody else to take their turn as far as that goes, and so you're all kind of figuring it out together. And uh, you can kind of move things around until finally everybody says they've locked in, and then you move on after that. And so I really like that you're kind of doing that simultaneously. It speeds up the game a bit there. Uh, and then you're basically trying to score more points. It's that kind of game where you're trying, you got all kinds of different ways that you're scoring points. You're scoring points from your improvements, from your creature comforts, which have great combos on them. Uh, you got here, uh, this one wants, it gives you straight up six points here. And then you get plus two for any wood resources you leave on there at the end. Um, this one here gives you an extra point for each toy or board game that you have. Uh, you've got some that give you points for having socks or having different food items. And some, some allow you to put resources on there to get points. So, some of your improvement cards will give you the ability to add books to cards to get extra points for those. And at the end of the game you also get points for different resources you aren't able to use. 
for different reasons. And so you got all kinds of different ways that you're scoring points. If you get the, if you have the Kickstarter version, they have also these this small mini expansion called Dreams Come True, <clears throat> and that gives you the ability to score points from bonuses throughout the game. I haven't played with it enough to know to really feel if it's fully balanced or not, but I have enjoyed playing with those. And there was a game where I had a whole bunch of those, and one of my opponents got very few, and he still wound up winning the game. And so it seemed like it was going to be kind of overpowered that I was getting all these bonuses in the end. Uh, I still wound up losing, so it didn't uh, overpower at least in that game. And so, but some, one of those things that you kind of added thing you can kind of focus towards. Uh, also, with the Kickstarter version, you've got these different player powers that come into play. I haven't really kind of had a whole lot of opportunity to feel all those out. I've played a couple games with them, and so uh, I've enjoyed using those. Uh, I have heard that some people think some are stronger than others, and that's probably true. But then again, uh, switching up different strategies uh, could uh, kind of help with that as well, and uh, having a different strategy might actually make some of those a little bit more powerful if you really kind of figure out how to use them to the fullest. And so I really love the gameplay of this. As far as ease of play goes, I think anybody can kind of get in and learn how to play this game and play it uh, pretty competitive, competitively pretty quick. Uh, it's, not, it's not too deep, and as, and as far as the gameplay itself goes, it's really easy to learn and play. And so ease of access gets an A-plus from me on that one. It is a little on the, the longer side for what you would expect from a game like this, but there is also kind of a, a faster mode that you can play where you take out some of the uh, different cards that, and so you kind of play two less rounds that way. But I do feel, even though I haven't played it like that, just th thinking about the games I have played with the full game, that to shorten the game almost feels like you're, you, you've started to build up your engine towards what you're going to accomplish and then you've ended too soon. It's kind of the impression I feel it would be like if I played with the two less rounds. And so uh, keep that in mind, but if you want a slightly shorter game, you can do that, especially uh, kids. Um, probably won't have the attention span to play the full eight rounds. And so doing six rounds uh, could work out in that situation. Okay, let's talk about replayability now. I think this game has quite a bit of replayability in that you have all these different visitors that are all going to kind of add something a little bit different to the game. You also have a pretty big deck of cards that you're not going to uh, get through all the time. And so there's going to be and different things are going to come up at different times. You're going to have all kinds of different combos that you can experience that I think each game is going to offer a little bit different just because of that in and of itself. You got all these different improvements that you can use and each one's going to kind of change up the way you play the game a little bit as you're going to find different things you want, might want to focus on depending on which improvement you got. Uh, you've also, like I said, you've got the Kickstarter version, you've got some extra expansions that kind of add some replayability there. Um, you've got the, just the fact that you're going to get different opportunities with the dice that come up. Uh, there's just so many ways that the game can just go differently for you. You've got a different order that these different uh, seasonal cards are going to come out as far as that goes. Uh, there's just all, all kinds of different things that are going to change up the game from game to game. I feel this game is going to have a lot of replayability just from the variable, variableness of all the different uh, pieces there. Okay, final thoughts. I really enjoy this game. It's got great gameplay, great art, great components. It's very easy to get into and learn how to play, but there's a lot of strategy that you can uh, focus on as well. I think it's going to be great for... Uh, all different age groups, especially since you can kind of shorten the game up for kids that might not have the attention span there. Uh, and, and so I give it a 9 out of 10. And I, I see myself enjoying this game for a long time to come. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you decide whether you'd like to get this game for yourself. Uh, if you've played this game, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.